It may come as a surprise, but a sterilization policy known as eugenics existed in this country for years. In fact, 33 states had a eugenics program in the early 1900s. Most ended after World War II. However, North Carolina's program ran until 1974. About 7,600 people in North Carolina were sterilized, many of them forcefully. Of those, about 3,000 are alive today. North Carolina is now trying to determine how to make amends for its sterilization program at a hearing today in Raleigh, where victims had a chance to tell their stories. And joining us now uh, from Raleigh, Dolores Marks, whose mother was a victim of the state's forced sterilization program, and Darren Bax with the John Locke Foundation. Uh, Darren, let me begin with you. Uh, why this hearing today, and what are the chances that North Carolina will make amends? Well, the, the state has been looking at compensating the nearly 3,000 living victims for a while now, and the state is getting serious about it. You know, unfortunately, North Carolina is one of the rare states that actually increased the number of forced sterilizations after World War II. So where other states kind of stopped uh, sterilizing people and learned the lessons from Nazi Germany, North Carolina didn't. About 77% of those sterilized occurred after World War II, and there's so many living victims, it's about time that we compensated those people. And these were people, just so I understand, Darren, these were people who the state deemed, uh, what, mentally unfit? The state deemed um, unfit, unworthy to reproduce. And what they would do is they would categorize them in a category, category called feeble-minded. And that was just a catch-all phrase. It was just a way to make sure that some people didn't reproduce uh, a way to ensure that we reduce welfare roles. Um, basically, there's a way to kind of get people that they didn't want to have reproduced, not in the general population anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Dolores, I'd, li I'd like to bring you in here to the conversation. Um, I know that you're, you're waiting and hoping for men's uh, related to your mother's uh, sterilization, your mother's case. Uh, can you tell me uh, what this would mean to you if, if the state did try and make this right? Well, it, it has gone on entirely too long, and my sisters and I, we've been working on this, and for the living victims, it would mean quite a bit of not only health care, but help for them. Uh, for us, it would make us feel much better. It would amend something that was done to my mother years ago, even though she's not alive today but it would help us to go on because we had to put our lives on hold to take care of what uh, Cherry Hospital in Goldsboro, North Carolina, sent back home to us. What were the circumstances, just very briefly, Dolores, of, of what happened to your mom? Why was she sterilized? After having um, my brother, um, she had postpartum syndrome. That's what it's called today. She was sent to Goldsboro Hospital and she was put on very strong medications. She was kept there for 12 years. Um, she worked in that hospital. We're assuming that the medicine was, um, you know, they would free up the medicine in order for her to work. And then in 1965, um, she was almost 40 years old. They uh, put her on one medication, sterilized her, and sent her home. Uh, uh, I'm and she did well. Darren, this this sounds like Nazi Germany, does it not? It comes from the same place, you know, the concept of negative eugenics, that we're going to try to control who's going to reproduce. So it does come from the same place. Nazi Germany certainly took it further than North Carolina did. North Carolina is not necessarily unique. Many other states, as you mentioned before, did sterilize many people. It just so happens that we have a lot of living victims. It's also important to remember that this is not some long ago history. This program lasted until the 70s, at least. So, you know, there's many living victims as a result of the fact that we've been sterilizing people for a long time, and it wasn't that long ago when this happened. So do you think we've learned anything from this, Darren? I mean, what lessons are to be learned from something so horrific in our own country's history, forced sterilization? That's the million-dollar question. I... I hope that it's, I mean, certainly we learn don't forcibly sterilize uh, people, but I think most importantly we want to learn the lesson that the idea of pushing the greater good at the expense of fundamental rights 
uh, is not a good idea. We have to be very careful. And what happened here was the state, through the use of force, physically invaded the bodies of innocent people and took away their most basic fundamental right. And that never should happen. It never should happen again. Uh, Dolores, I know you said that your mother is, is no longer alive today, but what would she think of this now that the state is trying to uh, hopefully make this right? I think she would be happy about uh, what the state is doing, but I think she would be very upset as to what they did to her. And can you ever forgive what's happened here to so many people uh, in North Carolina and across the country, Dolores? Of course, I can forgive, you know, because I believe there's a God and I can forgive. And what will make my family feel better is that we continue to help with the fight. My mother's gone, but she still lives through us. And we will continue to fight this to see that justice is done, not only for our family, but for all of the families, all seven, over 7,000 or more. It's difficult to talk about, I I impossible out. to forget. I have to get out what the state of North Carolina did to me. Elaine Riddick, now 57. <laughs> the man standing by her I is her only son, a child she had when she was 14 after she says she was raped. Riddick says the government called her feeble-minded and promiscuous. They slandered me. <laughs> they ridiculed and harassed me. <laughs> They cut me open like I was a hog. She can never have children again. Neither could Mary Fisher. After having three children at a young age, she said her doctor enrolled her in a program to get her tubes tied and told her it was reversible. It was not. Something that traumatic, you don't get over it. No matter how many times I put it in the box, I still brush against it. The North Carolina Eugenics Task Force listened to these stories as members tried to determine how the state should make it up to these victims. Some lawmakers have suggested payment of $20,000. We thank you, North Carolina, for your apology, but it's not enough. We thank you for the $20,000. That's not enough. You're going to have to look at more. You're going to have to dig deep. Other victims said they should get free health care for the health problems they had years after and the chronic depression many of them suffered. Yes, it is hard to talk about. So what am I worth? The kids that I did not have, could not have, what are they worth? Perhaps even harder to come up with the worth? answer.